My name is Joyce Tolentino, Music Ministry Coordinator at Grace Communion Ortigas. I serve in the Philippines, which is part of the bigger Asia region. In our local church, among other things, I oversee your music team together with my husband Aaron, who's also our senior pastor. When the pandemic hit, we transitioned to online services, so we've also been trying to support the national effort around that. As we move forward in the direction of Healthy Church, I've since become a member of the Hope Avenue team. And it's been an exciting time for us, trying to learn more about what that means and also finding ways to translate that into our local context with the hope of making our gatherings more intentional, inclusive, and inspiring so that the people who gather have a better experience of the hope we have in Jesus Christ. I think it's amazing how God is so steadfast and unchanging, yet so relevant in the ways we experience Him through the different seasons. During the extended lockdowns, I'm grateful to have had the opportunity for more Bible study, to be more intentional in learning, and that's really helped me connect with God on a deeper level. There's something that's always fresh about God's Word, and it's amazing how even the little details reveal so much about who He is and how He loves. And that's been a tremendous source of comfort, especially in these very challenging times. I have been working at home for more than a year now, and I love how it affords me more time to spend with loved ones. But trying to balance work, family, ministry, and masteral studies is a real challenge in itself. I find that having dedicated moments for each of those things um, over the course of a day or week really helps me, whether it's stealing a few hours earlier in the morning before office starts, or putting in a couple of hours later at night when the house is quieter. Obviously, that involves a lot of coffee. Sunsets, though, are for my six-year-old daughter, Lizzie, and we often watch those from our little balcony while dreaming about the things that we want to do when the pandemic is over. More than anything, I'm able to manage through the tremendous support system that God has blessed me with. I really am so grateful to have a husband who's a true partner in life and in faith. A daughter who even in her young age is so understanding and patient, especially when the adults are busy. And to have parents who have generously given care to my family. The Philippines, like the rest of the Asia region, has a large segment of young people who comprise the population. I feel so blessed to be part of a denomination whose culture it is to not just accept that, but to embrace young people and really enable their participation in community, ministry, and even leadership. I serve in music, and music has a natural appeal to the youth. So our team partners with the youth ministry to allow the young people to serve and participate in ways that they're really interested in, but still in the context of discipleship and mentoring with the hopes of grounding them on why we do what we do. One of the things that I also like seeing in recent years is more how there are young people in leadership, including our pastoral teams. In our local church, our faith, hope, and love avenues were really formed to be intergenerational. That way, the younger people can be brought alongside our older and more experienced members to really learn from them, to see, to see how they do things, to see how they do ministry, to see their relationship with God and with each other, but also to be able to contribute in their own way. And it's really a gift to be on the receiving end of the younger generation's ideas, creativity, and energy for life. I think that's also a great way of how they can own and participate in the vision earlier on. Our next speaker is someone who has had a tremendous impact on my personal and ministry life through his insight, example, and the opportunities he has opened for me in the same way as he has done for so many others. Serving under his leadership, there is never a dull moment, and I would describe him as someone who loves to connect people, who is unafraid of trying new things, and a person who just keeps going. 
It is my pleasure to introduce Eugene Guzan, GCI Superintendent for Asia. He will be sharing more about how God is moving within this region and what his hope is for the Asian region. Thank you, Joyce, for your kind introduction. I am blessed with a family team with my wife of 39 years, Lulu, who has enriched my personal life and ministry together with Joyce and my son-in-law, Aaron, and our granddaughter, Lizzie. We have shared major milestones, but even the small, seemingly unnoticed things done consistently make a big difference. My family is indeed my circle of love and strength. I would like to say greetings to our board and our leadership team, my fellow superintendents and our GCI family around the world. I convey blessings from the Asia region where I'm blessed to represent, including our regional community of practice with Pastor Dan Zachariah from the Indian subcontinent, Pastor Wong Min Kong from the Southeast Asian region, our GCI Philippines National Ministry Team, our office staff and faculty of Ambassador School, our 14 district directors, pastors and members in Asia, and our scattered brethren overseas. The past year with the pandemic and other calamities has been challenging, including in our region with the great losses to lives and livelihood. In the face of continued uncertainty, we hope in the God who is not restricted or locked down, who has overcome the grave, and who promised that He will be with us always. We are encouraged as we see the work of Jesus Christ continues. Nobody likes interruptions, but we can trust that God is not deterred. As we look at how God has been sustaining our churches, even as we participate in this virtual conference, may we be encouraged that this season, like other challenging moments, is also a time of opportunity to experience and participate with Jesus in unique ways. Now, since March 2020, Due to government restrictions, we have largely shifted from physical gatherings to online worship services. As the world moves to the digital space, technology has played an important role in our worship as well. It has brought brethren together in new ways, including giving Filipinos, brethren in other countries, opportunities to reconnect. This also enables the region to come together in worship, fellowship, discipleship in ways that we have never done before. Members across Asia have connected more personally through joint meetings, affinity group gatherings, special celebrations, and combined services which celebrate our cultural diversity and highlight the international nature of our community. Nestled between the Southeast Asian Peninsula and the Central Middle East Asia lies the Indian subcontinent. Home to 23% of the world's population, the subcontinent is also home to many great faiths, including four major religions, Hinduism, Islam, Buddhism, and Christianity. Grace Communion began its presence in the subcontinent in the late 1960s. Today, we have several congregations in India, the largest being in the city of Hyderabad. This is also where the national office of the church is located, having moved from the city of Mumbai. Pastoral teams have been set up to provide the oversight needed in these areas. A house church in Mumbai is under the care of pastoral team lead Sachin Nirale. The subcontinent is under the regional directorship of Pastor Dan Zachariah. He and his wife Mary have served the church since 1988. They provide pastoral and administrative oversight to congregations in the region. Grace Communion 
in the subcontinent has adopted the strategy to build healthy churches in the region. Following the pattern promoted by the Home Office, our congregations are finding a healthy balance within the faith, hope and love avenue. A vibrant women's fellowship focuses on needs among women and conducts monthly meetings to bring comfort and confidence through prayer. Our Hope Avenue attempts to provide inspiring and enthusiastic worship to our brothers and sisters every week. Our focus on healthy church has spearheaded the team-based, pastor-led leadership pattern for our congregations. It is heartening to witness the transformation taking place and the participation. It is encouraging as we are motivated by the high challenge, high support model. Roshan in Nepal and John Biswa and Amio in Bangladesh are also making efforts to establish healthy churches in their respective country. Roshan has made efforts to provide education by establishing a school in the village where he lives. John Biswa and Amio are working to bring the love of Christ in the communities they serve. It's been a blessing to be able to serve our church for 30 plus years now. And uh, today as we serve in our new roles, uh, my wife and I are grateful for the opportunity as well as working alongside Eugene and Meng Kong uh, in serving the brethren all over Asia. And we are looking forward to the various training programs to see our young uh, adults blossom in their new roles. Even this denominational conference is a breakthrough in the way God has gathered more of us internationally. More of our leaders and members from this region can participate without the need for a passport or a visa or a plane ticket. We just needed the password. More of our local churches are also having small group gatherings online, which would be harder to do physically due to busy schedules and long commutes. We have also seen the formation of some house churches meeting in smaller groups as government regulations allow. But there's one thing what Asians are noted for. We are known to be relational, sociable, and friendly people. Now this sense of community has transcended the four walls of the church building. This time of lockdowns has led us to explore new ways of communication, worship, and ministry. Over the past two years, we have also built on our relational culture in applying the principle of team-based ministry. Asia is a diverse region, and even our local churches are diverse. Demographics, age, subcultures, giftings, and dialects. We embrace this as a gift. As different people come together, driven by the love of God, and for the sake of the gospel. Now, I would like to commend and honor our Philippines and Asian volunteer pastoral teams. They take care of almost all of our 70 congregations and uh, 30 fellowship groups in the Philippines since this uh, early century. And it is the same way with our churches in Malaysia, Singapore, Myanmar, Thailand, India. Team ministry is alive and volunteerism is alive in GCI Asia. Now in our region, we have been applying also the concept of community of practice or what we call COP. My team, Pastor Dan, Zachariah, and uh, Pastor Main Kong, my team is a blessing. You know, doing missions in a diverse continent is overwhelming, but it is so liberating when you know that you can draw upon the friendships and each other's unique wisdom and strengths as we face challenges together. Now in the Philippines, we also have established the national ministry team to share the oversight of the ecclesiastical, the administrative development and missions concerns of the denomination in the country. It is energizing and encouraging to have people like Odi Santibanez, Rex De La Pena, Aaron Talentino, and Debbie Orogo alongside me as co-stewards of the Philippines work. And to know we can 
lean on each other, and learn from one another given our different experiences and expertise. The unprecedented challenge during this COVID-19 crisis, resulting in mandatory closures and restrictions on church in-person meetings, have actually hastened among church leaders the further dissemination, thoughtful thinking, prayer, and dialogue on the denomination's vision of healthy church. Why? Due to online technology. Technology where available and used well has been a silver lining and blessing for the church this past year and even this year. A national online worship service is allowing us not only to worship together as a church community in a national scale, but also inform and provide equipping that we have not done before in terms of reach and economy. Additional online equipping sessions regarding faith, hope, and love avenues are being accomplished faster than pre-COVID time. The concept of a ministry training center is an initiative of the Home Office as part of GCI's vision of Healthy Church. An MTC is basically a healthy church with an added long-term mandate of growing and developing leaders, particularly the emerging leaders. And this flows from the life and the ministry of the local church. Our church is not there yet, but we are making progress by strengthening the building blocks. In the last year or so, we have focused on communicating and understanding the concept of healthy church and healthy avenues to our leadership team, ministry teams, and our congregation. We also focused on setting up our faith, hope, and love avenue teams, identifying the best fit, equipping them with knowledge and tools so that they can function as teams and take on their roles. We also mobilize them by giving them opportunities to discern and to plan how they can take their avenues forward. With that, we also appreciate the coaching we have received from our national leaders, from the Home Office, and from our friends from GC Circuits. Throughout this process, we have seen a resurgence of enthusiasm to participate in the life of the church. We have seen a greater understanding and ownership of the vision, and a deeper sense of community where people are more aware of and respond to the needs of others within the church and beyond. In terms of MTC, it remains to be a journey for us, but we are open to where God is leading and how God is working. Asia is a big continent with so many people groups and languages. And one of the challenges is to be able to reach them in the language and culture that they understand. The Philippines is unique in that it is a predominantly Christian country. But elsewhere in Asia, religious restrictions may also exist that limit the ways we can engage and share the gospel in some countries. One partnership that God has used to grow our regional work is what we have with the International Graduate School of Leadership, or IGSL. I'm an alumni of IGSL, as are a number of other GCI pastoral trainees. Our connection with the school has allowed us to send young GCI leaders on scholarship and invite some of their international students for ministry opportunities in the local GCI churches, which could also be their home churches in the Philippines while they are studying. One of these international students is a man with a young family who comes from Bangladesh. During his two year study in the Philippines, they joined GCI Ortigas and uh, connected well with Pastor Aaron, who is also an IGSL graduate. Through his immersion in GCI Ortigas, he and his family were able to participate more closely in the life of the church, participate in ministry, build more personal relationships with the brethren, and become better acquainted with GCI as a denomination. Now, this student recently graduated and he returned to Bangladesh. 
and he has become our church planter in that country, supported by GCI Ortigas, other members, and the Philippine Church as part of support to God's work in the broader Asia region. Another graduate whom we have integrated in one of our local churches is from Nepal. We have been working with him to explore partnerships in church planting opportunities on behalf of GCI. In June 2020, in partnership with the Home Office, we hosted an introductory session on GCI Theology and Doctrine for a number of graduating seminary students in case the chance for collaboration and affiliation arises. This is one of the trends we are observing, how the GCI Philippines, given the country's unique position and openness to Christianity, is well paced to support the training of international students and through our networks, continue partnership with them for ministry and missions work upon their return to their home countries. I was also asked, what then is your hope for the region, Eugene? I would say our hope is that we are able to experience and discern and follow the work of the Holy Spirit in the region through these challenging and uncertain times. The uncertainty and hardship we experience around us highlight all the more our great need for Jesus. The truth of the gospel is as relevant now as it has been before. And I pray that God will strengthen us to persist in our faith in Him, to have compassion for others, and more zeal and energy in our participation with Him to make Jesus known in creative, tangible, and relevant ways. I am also excited as I see our young people, our emerging leaders, whom God is equipping and raising, and they're very much a part of the present ministry. They're what makes worship more vibrant through their energy, their talents, and the arts. Some of them are now serving in the pastoral fields. And I'm looking forward that these young men and women will later serve as our leaders in our churches. I am also excited about seeing GCI intentionally becoming more missional, more bold to engage and love the community. Now here in Asia, we are able to see some bright spots, but once this gains more momentum, we will not be surprised if more will become church planters and God will add more disciples. Over the years, there is something that we cannot deny. It's called the diaspora phenomenon. The world has become a global village and more people, due to various reasons, they migrate to other countries. The Philippines alone has about 12 million expats in more than 100 countries. The Philippines is also host to about a million Chinese and about a million Indians. Now these people are not beyond the reach of God and are not beyond the reach of GCI. Because GCI is truly international, I dream and we hope that in the future, there will be more people groups represented in our churches. I was so happy to hear about the Congolese in Australia. I pray that we can also have an Indian church, maybe in Malaysia or Singapore, as we reach the refugees and the expats. And we pray more Filipino-American churches in North America, just like the one that we have in Eagle Rock, or more field New Zealand churches in New Zealand. Also, when more and more Colombians become part of GCI Canada, or Filipino churches in places like the UK and other places, I can almost hear them saying, Kami ay GCI, we are GCI. I believe that this will happen as we follow the lead of the Spirit in members' lives when we see greater partnership and collaboration in our teams, in the continents, in empowering these people groups to reach their own people first, and then as they are led by God and trained, 
they can reach other kinds of people in all kinds of places through loving and authentic relationships. I believe that it is a possible dream and I invite you to join me, to join us in this prayer and hope. Let us hold fast the assurance that Jesus is with us as we follow his lead. As he said in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. God bless GCI and to God be the glory.